So, can you see the little seedlings there? Uh, Toscano kale, white Russian after that, and then some uh, pak choy. And they're all part of the same family, the brassica family. So I put them in the same bed. Kale and pak choy, radishes and turnips, uh, cabbages, Brussels sprouts. They're all part of the brassica family. And they all cons they're all considered the same crop by farmers. Anyway, um, these are unhealthy. Uh, these are the ones you saw me starting way back in an earlier video. And they suffered. I brought them up to the hoop house to harden off. More on that later. And uh, they caught a bad case of damping off. So damping off is a fungal infection. And what happens is, I don't know the specifics, but I know it attacks the stems of the plants. Uh, the main highway through which the plants gather nutrients from the soil and water as well. And uh, the... the, the uh, the stems, which should look kind of like that, see that? Instead, are all withered and narrow. Now these almost die. There's a withered and narrow stem. Do you see that withered and narrow stem right there at the at the very end, the top of the plant there, close to the soil? Yeah. So they're probably going to die, but I thought I'd try to save them. And that's what this video is about: trying to save these seedlings. Because you know what? Not everything goes right on the farm. So how I'm going to save them is I've put them in some uh, real healthy aerated soil for starters. Then I'm gonna use these supports and I'm gonna cover them over with a floating row cover. I'm gonna show you that in a second. I'm trying something new. So this video is not only a, a how-to, but it's also a what if, because I've never done it this way before. I have used floating row covers to cover over plants and give them a little extra protection from the elements. That's another thing I'm doing to try to save these plants, but I've never tried it this way. So let's see if this First works. First thing I'm gonna do is put some of these wickets that I've made, the same ones that are acting as trellises for the peas. Well, they're gonna act as supports, kind of like the ribs of the hoop house for like a little mini hoop house. Uh, I'm gonna put some underneath. I'm gonna put the floating row cover on top and then I'm gonna try and I'm gonna put more on top to pin them down. We'll see if it works. All right, so step one, I have loosely covered over the bed and I just uh, temporarily Pin things down with some clothes pins. On a windy day such as today, this is kind of a nightmare job and all by myself this afternoon. So, uh, step two is I'm going to take this rebar here that I use. It's just weight. I'm going to lay it along the edges. Now that I have a bit of a tighter fit, here's the new part. I'm going to go ahead and try pinning this down from the top with more of those wickets. Let's see if it works. Okay, that was a lot of effort. I think it might work. It's a pretty breezy day and things look pretty calm now. No, no more ruffling. You can see what I did here. This is the idea that I had. I took it from Elliot Coleman in his, uh, in the hoops he uses in the field. These are his old wickets. And yeah, look at that. Hold up good in the breeze. Good, it's a good stiff breeze right now. So you can see there's an over and under. There's one wicket underneath and it's, uh, it's uh, closed pinned down, oh, and then over top, there's another wicket sort of pinning it down. I pushed it right through the floating row cover at the ground level, and I did that every wicket. So it was an over and under, creating tension. Look at that, huh? I don't want to pat myself on the back yet, because I'm sure the wind will be stronger, but so far, so good. Because this floating row cover, it's, uh, it can be very helpful, but it's also a nightmare to keep down. And it's good spring wind, this can be very, challenging stuff to work with. So, I might have found something that works here, Wahoo! All right, anyway, the floating row cover is gonna uh, protect those already unhealthy seedlings from further damage. It'll keep the hardest of the winds off of them, easing stress, it'll keep the hardest of the frosts off of them. Only the hardest frost will get through there, so underneath it'll stay two to three degrees warmer generally, creating a more mild environment, and hopefully helping these uh, brassicas, pak choys, and kales to, to uh, recover and thrive. We'll find out in a few days. Follow-up video to come. What is this, a forest in my garden? <laughs> no, it's not. But this is my third bed of peas that I planted, and I ran out of wickets. So the wickets that serve as the trellising for the short vines of the shelling peas. This is called pea brush. Then the old sticks. I just cut down a bunch of choke cherry because that's what I have. Just stuck them in the ground every foot or so. And uh, I've done it before, it works great. And then you can compost the whole thing.